All right. Are you are you ready to talk, Miss Marvelous Marilyn? Yes, May? sweetheart. About other things. Okay. This is my darling friend. It feels weird you're going to interview me. <laughs> I know it's kind of funny, but you know, so be it. It's, it's nice. It's, it's nice. It's great. And I appreciate so, it. But, but who know. dubbed you? Who dubbed you Marvelous? And and when did that happen? Um, the first album, uh, my A and R man. He liked the M's, you know. And um, so he said, we're going to call it Marvel, not the, just Marvelous Marilyn May. Oh, no, it, no, it was Meet, Meet Marvelous Marilyn May, which my oh, first album. Okay, somehow I had, and then, it, it had happened uh, when you got to New York and the cabaret community, but that was a long time before that. And he knew what he was doing. And I know, you know, every time I write something about you or say something about you, I'm, I'm in that situation of, okay, how many more adjectives can I come up with? Mesmerizing, scintillating. I love, I love everyone I that you come up with. Hulk of lightning. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it's like, um, I got to find some more that uh, nobody heard of yet. <laughs> I love you know, everyone. That you, you're, a very, you you're a very hip um excuse me, 93-year-old interpreter of song. Terrible, isn't it? Terrible. Uh, but, but you know, you're, you're, you're the uh, epitome of, uh, you know, the jazz chanteuse, and uh, you're very fortunate you've had a long, successful career uh, on stage and recording. And I mean, think of all the places that uh, you have been at here in New York, uh, 54 Below, of course, being the top one, but we don't want to forget about Birdland and Dizzy's and uh, the Metro oh, the old Metropolitan Room and the Iridium and, you know, you, you're like everywhere. And- 54 uh, Below twice a year. <laughs> I know that. I know that. I was I was all ready to celebrate your birthday again there, but it, it, it I, I couldn't get to Florida, but I sure celebrated anyway. Uh, so you've got this remarkable energy, and um, where does it all come from, Marilyn? Uh, you push, <laughs> push, <laughs> and and uh, uh, I'm blessed, but also, um, you know, there are times that I'm really really tired, and I really have to have to muster and push and I know that it's very necessary it's a very energetic business and it is a business and I want it to continue so in order for it to continue I have to continue so you push you know the packing and the unpacking are the worst part of it the wonderful part is to walk on stage and sing but that's not easy either you know that it's it's uh it's work and it's fun work but it but it is you got to think about it, and it's not all fun and games. It's very, very uh, uh, planned and studied and rehearsed, and um, it's kind of, it's not just eight hours a day. I know that, um, and of course, people in the business know that, but you pull it off as though, oh, you know, it's so casual, I'm just going to get up on stage with uh, Ted at the piano or Billy at the piano or whoever uh, is at the piano and then some. And, uh, you know, it all pours out of you. I and want everyone to know that's watching that it is not just fun and games. <laughs> <laughs> now they definitely know it's not all fun and games, but, right. um, you know, we, we love the way you pull it off. Thank you, Andy. And, Thank you, so uh, you know, what? I tell you what I found amazing in the midst of this pandemic, you know, practically all the performers that we know have been on hold. Uh, you know, except for a small handful who've been doing oh, yeah. their own thing here and there. But there you were. You were in P Town, and then <laughs> that was in, in <laughs> like, Where's Carolyn? Oh, she's in P Town. Oh, and then next <laughs> she's going to be at the Wick. You know, for four nights, but they extended her for an extra night, so she had five nights at the Wick Cabaret Theater in Boca all sold out and I know that uh, because so many of my friends were there. And they were, I know I that. Know. I was so grateful that people that came from <laughs> New York. So and jealous. <laughs> they came from Florida, well, from Florida, yeah. They came from California um, and I had friends come from Philadelphia, of course. And of course, you know, I, <laughs> well, I mean, I know them really well, so they better have been there. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Philadelphia, Atlanta, 
and Iowa. I had a contingency from Iowa. Um, it was just a party. It was, you know, we always say that, it, that it's a party, but it really was a wonderful party with all these beautiful people showing up. I know. And of course, with you, it is always a party. I know that. And but um, I mean, you kind of have already told us what inspires you. Um, but, uh, you know, are you taking a lot of vitamins now? <laughs> What's going I do. On? I take a lot of vitamins. Um, that's all I take. I don't really have a, a doctor. Everybody says, what's your what is it called? A regular doctor? Not regular. What's your primary? Primary. What's your primary doctor? Yeah, and I don't have one. I don't, mine died and I just loved him and he, he didn't do what he knew he should have done. So I lost him, but my wonderful, I do have one doctor. I have a, a funny knee. And so I go to him every few months and he's my best friend. <laughs> so that's all I have and vitamins and, and Helen, you know, dishes out the vitamins to me, my assistant, Helen Zarda. And, um, I always say, I think she's killing me off slowly because I don't know what any of the pills are, you know, so she hands me and I just take them faith, you know, really like a good little girl <laughs> and he holds them in her hand. And I keep up the okay. good work, Marilyn, because she's dishing out all the right things for you because you look great. Let us hope. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I mean, who else could walk on a stage and all of a sudden up goes that leg again? you know, your punctuation with- I hate to say, Sandy, but these days I am hanging on. You know, we have a, a dear <laughs> friend. So remember remember Rose, Rosamond Hirschhorn? Remember darling Rosamond? She came to at least twice with, with any, if it was an eight day engagement, she'd be there maybe three times. And if it was a weekly engagement, maybe only twice. But if it was three or four days, usually twice, you know, never just once. And she was a singing teacher. She was a wonderful human being. And um, she died. She would have been in two days, she or two or three days, she would have been 99. And I so, you know, I so miss her. But she, but she always said, Marilyn, when you do that kick, she's a singing teacher, but she's giving me kick instructions. And when you do that kick, you have got to hang on to the hang on to the piano or something. Once in a while, I hang on to the mic. <laughs> and that's not really safe, <laughs> but but just something to steady me. So you know, the audience. It's so fun with the kick because because sometimes I do three. Three are really kind of necessary, but when I do five, now I have certain friends that that they know to hold up their their hands to five or three or to two or three. <laughs> I mean, everybody expects it. So, so yeah, you know, well, you're going to have to sit in the chair and kill. Don't, don't expect it. <laughs> We're not sure. We're not sure. But now it's fine. Now it's just fine. So uh, let me ask you something. If um, Do you think you've missed anything in your career? I mean, you've had this long career and you've been singing all your life since you've been a kid. And, um, you know, you're looking back over the years and saying, yeah, but I wish I had maybe blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I wish I had been a household name. You know, I wish that I was a megastar. <laughs> and I, and I, I wish that, that I really uh, was known, you know, that they would call Marilyn and it wouldn't just be Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they would say that uh, as uh, that they meant Marilyn May. Uh, I would like to have done that. And I was born too late. Had I been working, had I been known and recording in the 40s, I think my life would have been much more uh, reaching everybody in, in the world. I am honored that I do reach people in Japan and I reach people in, in Poland and, and uh, you know, around the world, but, but um, and in China. Um, I have an architect that, that is a big architect in China, but, but just the world. I would like to be, I would like to, that's selfish and, and egotistical, but, but I'm too old to be humble. That's, that's true. And I'm glad that you're as honest as you are. And of course, when somebody says Marilyn in our uh, circle, we all know who we're talking about. <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. One, Thank you. you know, it, you know. <laughs> it, it's just the way it is. You know, you know that. 
um, what's what's been the highlight of your of your career? I mean, if you're oh, looking God. back now, what would you talk well, about? Well, the, the the luck was, and I think part of it's luck and part of it's skill, because I I was singing good. But Steve Allen, the luck that Steve Allen, when he found me and brought me to his national show, and from that came Joe Renee with RCA, um, who said, I want to sign you to an RCA recording contract. But the, the, the interesting thought, of, uh, thought about that is that I'm really grateful for those albums that we have on RCA label. But at the same time that I was doing that, the Beatles were hitting, you know, and I, and I, I was fighting fighting that. Had I been in the 40s, that's why I say, had I been recording in the 40s, I think my life would have been different. But because the 40s people, the, the Frank Sinatra's and the people that, the Mel Torme's and the people, and the, you know, that were recording in the, in that era uh, became big mega stars, you know. So I think, but I am so grateful to New York. I should have moved to New York a long time before I did. Um, you know, we came here in 2006 for a Mabel Mercer convention and, uh, and then the Metropolitan reopened and, and I was hired there three times a year. And then Feinstein's 54 Below opened and we started coming here often. So, um, and all those wonderful, I'm dizzy, you know, it, it, it's wonderful to be there. And, and that's, that's the good news about it all. But, um, you know, I would have liked to have had even more time here earlier, but I, but I don't regret anything of, you know, what I did for love, what I did for love. <laughs> you, know? Well, listen, you know, maybe you needed to have adopted a, uh, a British accent like the Beatles. <laughs> that would have made well, it, it. I think it had to do with the style of music more than, more than, uh, you know, I'm, I'm singing the great American songbook that, that m most of my peers do, you know, and the people that I know and love. And, and uh, uh, I think the great American songbook has the great lyrics, has the great melody lines, has the great stories that we have to tell the people. And when that audience is filled with music loving people and they love what we do, what what greater reward but uh, you know the fact of the matter is that no one really tells the story as well as you do when you're Thank delivering you. a lyric and singing a particular song and the thing that is um something that i think we're all happy to see and look forward to are the number of young people who are now adapting developing in the spirit of the great American songbook. Right, right. It's more and more there's young people in my audience. Uh, the Atlanta people that I, that I mentioned that, that travel and they come to Feinstein's 54 Below all the time uh, when I do a show and they came to Carmel, Indiana. We were just there at, at Feinstein's Cabaret, mm -hmm. a brand new, brand new club. And uh, last weekend we were there and there they were, you know, and I said, oh my gosh, how do you even know? Well, you know, of course the internet is a wonderful thing. Um, and um, they said, I want you to hear our teenage boy because he really can sing and I want you to maybe work with him, you know, so that that's would be a great reward, too. But they are so loyal. So they're young people. They have they have a teenager, you know, but they're still young in 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 my category. And uh, uh, I think, you know, in Florida, the people were so hungry for the music. They they always respond beautifully. But at P-Town and in Florida, not only did they applaud and stand and all that, as they usually do, but a lot of people cried. They were so thrilled to hear this music. And to, you know, I, I do tell the story of the song and, and they know that I love them and they return the love. Yeah, it's very evident. And that's why you have such a huge fan base all over. I'm grateful, I'm grateful for every one of them. And it's it's just it it's so fulfilling. You're a singer, Sandy. Do you tell your people that? Do you know? Do they know what a good singer you are? Not too many people do because <laughs> I I haven't had much time to concentrate on that. And every time I'm with you, you remind me. 
So that's always <laughs> that's always and a well, little. Thing. It's, it's really fun to be to be <laughs> uh, reviewed and interviewed by a by a singer that knows what she's doing. I'm, I'm very honored about that. <laughs> oh well, thank you. That's that's very 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 kind. Um, so uh, let's talk about what's coming up. Um, we hope hope and pray that by October, uh, Feinstein's 54 Below will be open so that we can do our seven days there. So we're all keeping our fingers crossed about that. And uh, yes, we're all doing that. And um, I am going um, to, as I say, I was just in Florida and that was great, great, wonderful. And the people were so re receptive to it all. And um, uh I did a master class there and had some good singers and and uh, we 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 really that's very rewarding to me when when I think I've made a difference in somebody's uh, presentation and their performance. Um, in in uh, in two weeks, well, May May 20, 21, 22, 23, we'll be in Minneapolis at Crooners, where we were last October. They, they, they have two gorgeous rooms in their club. It's called Crooners. And, and, um, but they also have a great big parking lot. So they bought a tent. Sandy, they bought a tent. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and we perform in the tent. And I was just told by the owner that they now have purchased a, a, a so that I don't have to go from the tent in way into the club to the dressing room. They now have purchased a a big van that that is I guess it's a trailer kind of dressing room for me. So that's kind of lovely. I'll I'll go directly to the to the dressing room. Um, we don't do meet and greet. Um, Ted, in March, um, in March of 2020, we were in St. Louis. We were at Jazz St. Louis, and um, we were there for four days: nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Mm -hmm. And by the tenth, we were being, we were hearing about it all, you know. And Ted said, "Now, Marilyn, you're not going to do meet and greet." And I said, "Well, honey, if they, if people want to say hello, you know." I said, "We'll just elbow. <laughs> we'll do, we'll do an elbow." <laughs> And indeed, people did. So we said, no, 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 you can't even do that. And I said, well, but I, but we did. But now, um, I think more and more people are calling. Got a call from Las Vegas yesterday. And uh, I think they're trying to, to, you know, get open with positive thoughts. And, uh, you know, so many people say, well, I've had my shots. And I hope that's a positive, uh, motivating factor of working. But but we are praying that these clubs get open because it's our it's our lifeline and certainly it's very important to to people that have other jobs because I think it's their heart and soul to come and see the entertainment. It is, and more and more clubs are opening or finding a way. And I'm very aware of what's happening in Minneapolis because just today Beck Lee was in touch with me to give me all oh. that information because- Right, I'm sure he was. <laughs> He's a press agent. <laughs> so you that's know great. all about it. So I'm happy to hear uh, all of the details from you. Uh, and what I do want to talk about is up and coming, and that's happening uh, actually next week on May 8th. Marilyn May, Broadway, the May way streaming at 54 below so let's let's talk about that is this uh do we hear some new material in there no it we did broadway show because i felt that without the show's opening uh we would reflect on how great those great songs are and and uh, the the four owners of feinstein's 50 are our broadway show producers i just looked at the screen at myself and one of the owners is Richard Frankel, and he has this incredible, we're in his office, and we have these incredible masks. And this one mask looks like I'm wearing it. I think it's a hat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not wearing it. <laughs> it looks like a hat. It kind of matches my hair, and it's kind of cute. I'm, it's, <laughs> but anyway, so I um, do I'm more on the subject. Um, so I've done Hello, Dolly, and I've done Mame. And I've done uh, Follies. I've done two productions of Follies, one as uh, uh, Sally 
and one is Carlotta. Sally gets to sing uh, "I'm Losing My Mind" and "Buddy, uh, Buddy in uh, in Buddy's Eyes" and all those great songs, which I did not do in the virtual. But uh, but Carlotta sings "I'm Still Here," and that's a very appropriate song for me and so we do that so, and and the dolly songs and the and the mame songs and then i love my fair lady i, I was never my fair lady but but i i just love the material from my fair lady and we kind of jazz it up it's not done anything like like the show it's i must say it's a it's a different arrangement and and feel rhythmically but but those songs are fun fun in the act so we just called it Marilyn, called it, uh, what do we call it? <laughs> what you say? Broadway, the May way. That's it. Yep. That's it. And I know it's going to be great. And uh, I'm planning on being there on uh, Saturday night. Thank you. And it's, it's performed right there on that stage. I know. At, at Einstein's 54 Below with the beautiful background and the beautiful sound and lights, you know, KT and, and uh, uh, K, KJ is, uh, KT, K, KJ is our sound person mm -hmm. and, uh, and Amanda is our, no, he's lights and Amanda is sound. I, I know it, I know that really well, <laughs> just la la la. <laughs> You appear in so many places, it's hard to keep track of who is doing what, where, but you're doing a pretty good job of it. So we had, we had uh, good, good, good sound with the Feinstein's Cabaret in, in, Car in Carmel, Indiana. And uh, uh, that was fun too. I, of course, I had to write a song about Carmel, Indiana, Carmel, Indiana, Carmel, Indiana. This is where I want to be. You know, that kind of thing. I was just going to so. mention, uh, you know, you're also the queen of parodies. So <laughs> that's you know, what a reputation <laughs> you do. And that's an expectation now. Nobody expects them see or hear Marilyn May on stage without her famous parody. They see original lyrics. I can't resist it. I can't help it. It's a malady that I have. <laughs> I have to write some original lyrics. And well, some of the songwriters like it, and some of them probably don't. <laughs> I don't hear from them. <laughs> so wait a minute. What's the what is actually your favorite parody that I've written? Yeah, uh, uh, put on a happy face, and that's in the show. Oh, um, can you and, sing and a little bit it. of it? Well, um, you know, we do the first chorus. Charles Strauss, of course, wrote wrote the first chorus. And then uh, when you're feeling mean and grouchy, there's no money in your kick. When your disposition's ouchy and you're feeling kind of sick. When your wife has packed and left you cause you came home kind of late. And your girlfriend telephones you, she's got another date. When your dog just growls and bites you while you are patting him on the head. And your best friend starts an argument, winds it up like this, drop dead. When your car breaks down while you're uptown, go take a bus. Don't fuss, don't cuss. You've got to adjust. Don't you frown. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da. Put on a happy face. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba -da. Put on a happy face. When you are now, this is back to Charles. When you are feeling cross and bickerish, don't stop to whine. Just think of banana splits and licorice. You'll feel fine. Key change. I know in the key change. They have to they have to watch the virtual to hear the whole thing. <laughs> Honey, you're a one-man band. What can I say? <laughs> My foot's going. Ah, <laughs> uh, honey, you're you're just the best. God. I wish that I was there with you in person. Andy, thank you for all the past wonderful reviews that you've done. I, I'm so grateful, and I send them to my the world. <laughs> thank you. You've been sent to the world with with the reviews. I am not shy about you know that when it's a, a rave review and, and I have to say, thank God they are, that you are certainly are, are sent to, to lots of my close friends and they look forward to it. I'm happy to hear that. So here's the question. Has anybody ever given you a bad review? Yes. In, in uh, Toledo, Ohio, many, I'll never forget it. <laughs> In Toledo, Ohio, a woman came to the to the show, and and she said, her her show would make one think that if you were a normal housewife, I don't even cook, I can't cook, 
<laughs> if you were a normal housewife, you could you could get up, get dressed up in your sequins and sing a few songs. <laughs> and I'm anything but a normal housewife. <laughs> that is a strange review. <laughs> I have Isn't that a funny summation of my performance? I, a normal housewife. I don't. Oh God. Oh God. No. Well, well, and I'm, and I wish I could be a normal housewife. I just never found the right man to be one for. Well, that's a whole other topic. I know that um, there have been a series of gentlemen in your life, yes. and uh, each one has. And there still a, is. And there still is. <laughs> and each one has a special story. Mm -hmm. that's, right. that's right so that's fun but, but singing you know my first love is is the song <laughs> I know that so Marilyn um I'm gonna look forward to seeing you on uh Saturday streaming uh Thank on you, 54 Jenny. below and uh that's actually the the same day here's a little uh, stuff uh that's the same day as I do my annual songwriter event. Uh, it's my, sixth, oh. my 16th year. And of course, I would have invited you to just come on the American Popular Song Society and uh, listen to all these great new songwriters that I'm presenting. What time uh, do you do that? Noon. Are what you a, doing it via virtual or you're- It's Zoom and, it's, and a lot of it Zoom. is live. I can do that. We don't go on till 7.30. I'm sending you the link. And if you can come on, that would be fab. I would, love, I would love to do that. Okay. Let's figure that out. Great. Let's figure I'm going to have two wonderful. And it's all original people. songwriters, right? Yeah. A lot of new songwriters and, um, and some great singers. Some of them you probably know, actually. And then there'll be others that you don't. And there'll be, you know, some interesting surprises. I can't believe that it's 16 years that I'm doing this, but you know, it's kind of what it is. My darling, uh, Billy Goldenberg, you know, mm -hmm. wonderful songwriter of ballroom. We're doing, we're doing one of his songs on the uh, virtual of 50%. He was on stage and I tell the story about him being on stage with, with me and, um, and then golden rainbow with Walter Marks. He's Billy left us not, too long ago and I hate it I'm just oh you know but I always say he's got a better seat he sees every show now as as did as does Jerry Jerry Herman but um uh Walter Marks is it was in our audience uh, in October at Fine Science 54 Below and Sandy wrote me the most adorable song that that I I had announced on the show that my the name of the next show was going to be in April of 2020, it was going to be 92 and I'm not through. And he went home and wrote a, the most adorable song that he sent to me. And of course, I haven't I wasn't able to do it, you know, so so 93. And I don't know what the name of that show is. You know, Mark Sandroff names the shows. <laughs> Heaven only knows what 93 will be, but um, or what the show will be. Maybe that's it. 93. And what's the show to be? <laughs> Be working on 94 soon. Well, let us hope. Let us hope that we will. I'm yeah. blessed and, and yeah, I'm will. grateful for that. Yeah. And I'm blessed with friends like you and people that, that understand and love the music. And love you. So, Marilyn, you. Um, I love you. Thank it's you, been, Sandy. It's been a great pleasure just sitting here and chatting with you. I wish I could just reach out and touch you and give you a <laughs> hug and a kiss. The but, time will come soon. But that will Thank come you. soon. And um, I'll see you on uh, Saturday, May 8th, twice. Okay, love you lots. Cheers. Bye. Cheers to you, sweetheart. Bye.